Contributing guides are so important. Most open source projects have them and most probably need some improvements or get out of date. We've just literally updated ours today and that's why we're making this video. But also in this video, I wanna show you how we've iterated many times on our contributing guide. So we think it's pretty good. There's always room for improvements and hopefully this will help in your project also. And feel free to use our contributing guide. Let us know in the comments below what parts you used or what parts you agree or disagree with. I always highly recommend reading the contributing guide before contributing to a project. So this video is for contributors as well as maintainers. Let's focus on issues. So creating an issue, but before creating an issue for a feature or a bug or any improvement, please check an existing issue doesn't already exist because it creates more noise, more work for the maintainers and can cause confusion. So definitely have a little bit of a search with some of the keywords that you would use in your issue to make sure another one doesn't already exist. And if one's already been raised by somebody, then feel free to add a comment. Um, if you want to add more value, maybe you've thought of a different perspective or something else it could cover. And if you can't add a comment to it because they've written a great issue, but you agree with it, then you could give a reaction, give a thumbs up to show that you agree with it, but it doesn't create notifications for people. If the issue doesn't already exist and you're creating it, give as much context as possible. And please, please select the right issue type. For example, bug or feature. A lot of projects have other. Don't just automatically go for other because there is GitHub actions like automation that will add the appropriate labels to the right issues and notify the right maintainers as well. In the link free project, all issues are automatically given the label status waiting for triage and are automatically automatically locked so no comments can be made. This is to reduce the noise. I know it's not perfect, but it is to reduce the noise of people wishing to be assigned the issue without it being ready for dev and it creates confusion and people might start work on it when it's not assigned to them and the project might not even want that suggestion yet. And so it's good to wait for the maintainers to triage the issue first and by locking this, this allows us not to have any confusion between uh, the contributors and the maintainers. And once it's ready for dev, it is then unlocked. But if you've raised an issue and you do want to work on it once it has been triaged and the label has changed to status ready for dev, please include this in your issue description because nothing worse than you wanting to work on an issue, you raise the issue and then you're asleep, it gets triaged and unlocked and someone else comments, I would like to work on the issue and it gets assigned to them. So just in your description, include that message. Make sure it's clear that if it is accepted as an issue, you would like to work on it. Working on an issue, you get an issue assigned to you before you do any work. So follow these steps, I think it will be really helpful. Only ask to be assigned one issue. If you ask to be assigned multiple issues, you're blocking other people, what we call issue hoarding. Uh, you don't wanna block other people from working on it and you're making the project work at a slower pace and can cause confusion. And you can't work all, on all these issues at once anyway. Way. Definitely remember to check out for the issue label status ready for dev. If it doesn't have that label, your work might not be accepted and we don't want you to waste time on it. What you need to do when it has the label status ready for dev and it's not assigned to somebody else, comment on the issue asking it to be assigned to you, but please do not tag the maintainers or tag them on GitHub or Discord or send them DMs. The maintainers will receive your notifications and will assign it to you when they get a moment. Remember, everyone's in different time zones they have work, they have other family life to consider as well. So only start working on this issue or creating a pull request when it has been assigned to you. And this will prevent confusion, multiple people working on the same issue, and then some work potentially not getting accepted. One thing to note when you're forking the project, please do not enable GitHub Actions. We have added improvements to the GitHub Actions so that they check they're not running on a fork, but this can cause conflicts and add extra files to your pull request, which you definitely don't want. So that's one thing to check when you raise a pull request, make sure it is the files that you've changed and there's no generated files that are included in your pull request for example, like the package lock and some other generated files like changelog, etc. To help the maintainers and the reviewers, make sure you reference the issue in your pull request and you can go a step further with not much extra work to you, but I know everyone will love this, is in your issue, you could write closes, hash, and then the issue number. So for example, closes, space, hash, one, two, three. Or you can use fixes. And this will make sure that 
people can go to the issue and show, see that it's assigned to you. And also people who are looking at the issue can easily go and find the pull request because it will get added to the issue timeline. This is super useful. And also when your pull request is merged, it will automatically close the issue. That's one less task for the maintainer to remember and to do. Here are some extra tips to please keep in mind. It is not sustainable for the maintainers to review all the historical comments for assigning an issue before the label is status ready for dev. I know the issue um, can be locked, so you, that doesn't happen so much anymore, but with other issues where there are discussion and people are trying to bounce ideas, is it a good issue to actually move into status ready for dev or should we lock it? And some people do put in comments, I wanna work on this issue, but it's not ready for dev yet. It just creates more noise. So please check for that label first and only request assignment of that issue if it's not assigned to someone else and has that label. On that note, let me just repeat that because it's quite important. Check the assignee box at the top right of the issue. Make sure it isn't assigned to somebody else before requesting it. If an issue is unclear, ask questions to get more clarity before having it assigned to you. And then only request an issue if you know how to work on it. You're still going to have questions as you work on the issue, and that's fine. But you need to know kind of a game plan, like what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. And if you have any questions, always please do ask. But if you don't know where to start, then that maybe that issue isn't for you and you should select an issue that has less points. That means it's a little less complicated. Or so look for an issue with a label, good first issue. And we're always there to help in Discord as well but it doesn't seem right to be asked to be assigned an issue, take that away from someone else and say, well, how do I get started? You need to have a good idea of how you approach the issue. And if you get stuck or you have questions, definitely please do ask. An issue can be assigned to multiple people. If you all agree to collaborate on the issue, it can be assigned to multiple people and the pull request can contain commits from different collaborators. Building on to what we we're saying before about if an issue is already assigned to someone and you wanna work on it, if there has been no activity for two or more weeks, it will be unassigned and could be reassigned to somebody else. So do check the timing on that as well. Let's move on to reviewing pull requests. We really welcome everyone to review pull requests. It's a great way to learn, network, and support each other. It's an important skill to practice. Let's talk about the do's and don'ts. Let's start with the do's. Be kind and respectful. We use inclusive, gender-neutral language. For example, they, them, instead of guy or man or he. Use inline comments to explain your suggestions. It makes it so much easier to understand the specific code or specific changes you're talking about. And you can use the inline suggestion proposals so therefore people can just accept your changes if they agree with them. And that way you become a co-author of those changes as well. So it's a great way to get more green squares. Some don'ts. Do not be rude. Do not be disrespectful. Do not be aggressive. Reread your message before you post it. Make sure you haven't written it in shorthand that could be taken in a kind of a rude way you might not mean it but remember we're all in different time zones we all have different responsibilities we're all doing this between work and there are language barriers and language challenges so make sure you are clear and concise with your message do not repeat feedback on the pull request this creates more noise than value so do check the existing conversation if you agree with an existing comment then use the github reaction to agree or disagree with it with a thumbs up or thumbs down but don't put a comment just literally copying and pasting what they said and please, please do not blindly approve pull requests to improve your GitHub contribution graph. This is a great way to get blocked from the repo and the organization because you're just creating noise and creating more confusion because now maintainers might not review that pull request because it looks like it's been approved already when it hasn't been reviewed properly yet and someone's just trying to game the system. Remember, there are no shortcuts, there are no cheats and no hacks. You need to be consistent to improve your GitHub profile to stand out and add value to a project. But I don't mean you need to work day and night on it. Just do things little and often, just like going to the gym. I hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget to come and geek out with us in the Eddie Hub Discord. We chat between videos and live streams and daily on the Link Free project. Link in the description below.